Hey cats, it's your mid old man, Ed Budd here. After the crazy flurry of running shoe releases so far in 2024, the rest of the year shows no signs in laying up. We've got new updates from Adidas, Hoka, and Nike too. Let's take a look at the most exciting releases that we can expect in 2024. Welcome to the channel and thanks for dropping by, it's always appreciated. Help us to reach a million subscribers by hitting that button below, but also giving this video a thumbs up like, it really helps out with the algorithm. Danke schön. Taking a look at some of the forthcoming releases in 2024, there's some superb running shoes set to drop. First up, we have some more detailed images now of the Nike Zoomfly 6. Profile looks a little bit more like the current Vaporfly 3 and Alphafly 3 models in terms of the upper and midsole dimensions. Seem to have that same sort of midsole flare at the rear of the shoe as in the Alphafly 3. By all accounts, this Zoomfly 6 uses ZoomX and an SRO2 combination in the midsole, complete with a carbon plate for a little bit of rigidity. At least this time around, the Zoomfly 6 looks set to use a continuous piece of ZoomX material underfoot, rather than that crushed up stuff we had in the Zoomfly 5. Can't believe that was out like almost two years ago. I didn't really put that many miles into my pair of those. I just didn't get on with that shoe. It was too clunky and too heavy. I sort of moved towards the Pegasus model really from that period. I mean, when the Zoomfly 5 came in around about 350 grams in my size, it just made it a bit of a waste of money. This time around, the midsole is carved out to some extent as per the Vaporfly 3. There appears to be a little bit less rubber on the outsole perhaps too, weight relieving things a little bit further. Those cutouts are also on the side wall as per the Vaporfly 3. I hope this one will be a slightly softer, more forgiving ride than we had in the last version of the shoe. Just felt a bit firm and uninspiring really at pace. Though apparently sources online are suggesting we got a long wait for the Zoomfly 6. They suggest it could drop in November 2024, so that seems like a lifetime away. Either way, the continued reluctance of Nike to produce some sort of Zoom X midsole with a nylon plate still baffles me. They kind of had the blueprint right back in the original Zoom Fly, but their competitors have kind of taken that and run with it. No pun intended. Lots of the viewers have been contacting me and getting very excited about two images of some new forthcoming Adidas shoes. There appears to be an Adidas Adios Pro 4 here, which still features the Light Strike Pro material in the midsole, though we've got an upper now that is more reminiscent of that recent Pro Evo 1 release, you know, the one that was like 400 quid, <laughs> seemed to have a upper made purely of paper. The shoe looks to continue with that split midsole here, featuring similar design details as we've seen on the last two versions of the Adios Pro model. Though this time, and I think everyone will be cheering about this, a more standard lacing setup in terms of the eyelets. They've gotten rid of those little lace loops that were towards the initial eyelets, which I'm really pleased about. I didn't like those way back on the SL20.2. That was, yeah, they just ruined that shoe. In fact, the SL20, that they released back in 2020 was one of the best Adidas shoes of that year, certainly from a value perspective. Not sure the midsole looks all that different to the current version of the Adios Pro, perhaps the new upper atop the midsole there is the major feature. In fairness, with the model doing so well at recent races, you can't really blame them. It would just seem foolish to completely change the shoe. I remember seeing a bunch of runners using these at recent local races, and when you consider that the Adios Pro 3 can be picked up at around about 150 pounds on discount, well, that says it all really, doesn't it? So in actuality, there appear to be few changes this time around, aside from perhaps improving the upper, which was a bit of a bugbear for me. I think the one that people are most interested in is this Adi Zero Evo C. Appears to have a chunkier, more padded heel area here, and a mesh-like upper design compared to that Adios Pro 4. Which is kind of interesting, really. I guess this is perhaps more aimed at a training version of the shoe. Maybe like a sort of long-distance, plush cushioned version. The creasing in the midsole there give away to the potential use of Piba foam here. 
as per the Pro Evo 1 release. In fairness though, it could just be that this pair has been heavily used by someone. Maybe they've put it into one of those machines that, you know, test the midsole after thousands and thousands of steps. I reckon though that this could be some sort of more standard everyday folk kind of version of that midsole foam. That Pro Evo 1 being released sparingly back at the tail end of 2023. Though I do recall seeing a second release window for that one. I think they even put the price even higher that time. Not that you can go that much higher really for a bit of foam and some rubber, a bit of glue and some fabric. You know, how much can you really charge for it? It's not like the elves are making it you know using special magic it's a machine probably which yeah puts it all into perspective really doesn't it perhaps there's a different carbon plate position here in the adi zero evo c in terms of where the midsole proportions separate though it's all speculation at this point really need to understand what the differences are between these sort of top tier level shoes i think with the prime x it was very clear as to what the intention of that shoe was super cushioned lots of rebound though i think when it came out with that very narrow heel it completely confused everybody i absolutely love that shoe so i hope they continue the prime x and maybe go back to that original design the second version just simply didn't have the magic i think sometimes all this technological stuff it does confuse people and perhaps even puts people off from gambling and trying out some of these shoes if there's no sort of hard facts to back up the reasoning behind the design i think people are a little bit untrusting perhaps look at nike air for example when nike first started to incorporate that into their shoes in the 70s people were very very cautious in utilizing those thinking that the air units would like pop or break now of course people snap up the alpha fly 3 with two exposed air units in like seconds of them going on release so clearly people's minds have changed about that air technology over the years i guess we eat with our eyes Either way, I'm keen to understand what the differences are between these new Adidas shoes. Let's hope some more details appear about those so it can fill in the gap somewhat. I think with Adidas and Nike at the moment, there's a lot of shoes that cover the same areas. And I think it's a little bit confusing to people as to which one they should pick up, which one's going to be sort of the best for them. Lots of similar features, functions and price. But it's cool to see Adidas moving forward with some of the models. Next shoe up is from Hoka. This one looks really cool. The Hoka Skyward X. Hoka nailing it recently with some of their new Piba foam based shoes. This one's got a 46 millimeter heel stack in the sample size. I think for me that means it's going to be you know up towards 49 or 50 though 9.2 ounces in the sample size as well so it is going to be one of those sort of more weighty shoes a very much training option very much a daily use affair with this one i think a frame of super critical eva which would provide a firmer holder for some of that lovely piba based foam that hoka have been using in recent time within the rocket x2 and the celo x1 i think people that have been enjoying those two shoes need a trainer or a daily use beast that can join in the fun for the more general activities something that won't wear down too quickly and deliver a nice stable ride with a bit of propulsion so i think this could be hoka's prime x type effort rather than the super blast from the brand i think we got about 40 mil in the forefoot of this one so it's about a six mil drop which is ideal that seems to work very well for me right now certainly taking into account my recent runs in the metaspeed sky paris last up a very early peek here at something that's going to really excite some Saucony fans it does appear that there is going to be a Saucony Endorphin Elite 2 at some point many people have been asking about whether there's going to be a second version of that shoe and it does seem like there will be I think people are intrigued by the fact that the Endorphin Pro and the Elite both exist with similar weights but perhaps different underfoot feel. The Power Run PB and the Power Run HG foams being quite different really in terms of their features. They do appear to be continuing with the Endorphin Elite 2, that very considerable four foot rocker there in the new version of the shoe, if these midsole forms are anything to be believed. Let's not forget that the original version of the Elite had that forked plate in the mid to four foot area, rather than the sort of standard one that we've got in the Pro 4. So. Perhaps due to the slightly denser foam, they feel that that sort of forked plate will 
provide a little bit more sort of movement, a bit more flexibility. The pictures of the midsole here look a little bit more rounded and kind of stretched out, a bit more elongated perhaps. There's some curved elements as well to the side walls. Either way, it's a very early look at how they might evolve the Endorphin Elite and sort of push it a little bit further away from the Pro 4, maybe. I reckon this could be some way off, maybe even the end of the year, as per that Zoomfly 6. Though we do have some more colorways dropping of the Endorphin Elite. I think there's a blue version coming out very soon to go alongside that white, red and blue version that we had recently. Or was it like white, red and purple? I think it might have been white, red and purple. Too many shoes recently, guys. There's like been an influx over the last two months. So many new models. Okay, that's a quick look at some of the forthcoming shoes coming out in 2024. I will have a part two of this video later in the week, so keep your eyes peeled. I think out of all of them, the most characterful one there for me is probably the Skyward X from Hoka. Really been enjoying those recent Hoka shoes. They're on a rich vein of form. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Very quick musical interlude for you. It seems like an absolute age since we had a proper Mac DeMarco album. I know we had that sort of collection of weird instrumentals and half finished tracks last year but it was a bit like impenetrable there's just so much there you can't really get into it i've been listening to here comes the cowboy again back from 2019 and it's aged really well actually i think because it's just such a simple album with very few extra bits of instrumentation really lets max voice sort of come through my favorite track on the whole album is called preoccupied it's got this beautiful laid back vibe like sort of bird sounds in the background. Mac just carefully, gently strumming his guitar, talking about how everybody's kind of preoccupied out there with all this other stuff going on. Not appreciating like the here and now, you know, where you are, what's happening right now, letting all those beautiful little moments disappear, you know, because you're not taking them in. Perhaps because you've got your phone in front of you. So at the end of this video, you know, switch off YouTube and Go out there and just wander around a bit. Get some fresh air, you know, probably do you good. Love the sound of Matt DeMarco's albums and I hope he comes back with some new stuff soon along this sort of line. Let's his songs come through and I've always found them to be really like interesting and kind of mellow in a enjoyable sort of way. Here comes the cowboy by Matt DeMarco. Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.